You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob, and you are listening to episode 684. As always, we are so glad that you're taking a few minutes of your day to hang out with us. Hopefully we can give you some useful information, things that will make your drone life better. Yeah, because if you're living the drone life, the more efficient systems you have, the easier the drone life is, and the more time that you have to fly and take flight. Right, Rob? Absolutely. Anyway, today's show is brought to you by our friends at the Drone U community. If you're not a part of the premier online drone training program, then I wonder why. If you love these podcasts and you love the information, I greatly appreciate the reviews that you've given us. But if you want more information that's deeper, more organized, and gives you text message alerts, then then you're definitely going to want to uh, check out the Drone U community because it's 25 different courses for one low monthly price. In addition, you get access to the online secret group, the community, which is very different from any other Facebook page out there. Why do I say that? Because it really is. It's inspiring. It's motivational. And people are willing to help you out at just a little bit of notice. So if you're looking for people to keep you motivated to live the drone life, escape the nine to five and turn your passion into profit, then you've got to check out thedroneu.com. Also, big special thanks to our friends at videoblocks.com. You know, there was this project I was working on, Rob, that was out on the West Mesa and there was some cloud cover and I missed the sunset and I really needed a sunset shot in the desert with cactus. And you know, I really love Swaro cactus. Hmm. And we don't have those here. Nope. So I had to go to videoblocks.com forward slash drone and get some sunset footage of Phoenix with some Swaro cactus. They are very cool. They're it's kind of, For me, it's kind of like looking at the clouds and just seeing what they represent, right? I do that with those cactus when I'm driving <laughs> through them. <laughs> like that dude's flipping me off. That kind of thing. <laughs> I saw one that looked like a sword when we were recording the subject exactly. tracking class. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but anyway, if you need to increase your production value for your videos and sometimes you just don't have the time to get the shots that you need, you've got to check out videoblocks.com forward slash drone. All right, my friends. Rob, why don't you go ahead and play that funky question? All right, I'm going to warn you all. There, this is a long question, um, so bear with us. Hello, Paul and Rob. This is Mitch Darty down here in southern East Tennessee. As my accent is already southern, I thought I would enhance that southern slang just to get a little bit more content in this question. There's a lot of talk about DJI and privacy issues, the new software upgrades, updates to come. Over here in Tennessee, I do a lot of flying for real estate, construction sites, and so forth with my DJI drone. However, I stay within the guidelines of local law enforcement here as the sheriff does pack a 12-gauge sawed-off shotgun in his truck and I want to do things the right way. However, I got some questions for professionals over there in Albuquerque. What app should I be using to monitor the airspace and to make sure that I'm abiding by all local law enforcement, or as I should say, the FAA federal agency that governors the airspace here in East Tennessee? There's a lot of new apps I know on the horizon, and maybe I just need to hold my reins back here on the horse and just wait for the best application that's to launch soon, as I hear. Secondly, the whole Wi-Fi, no Wi-Fi, connected, not connected. Uh, When I fly, I'm not concerned with any flight path that I may take. However, I am concerned that uh, my entities coming through into my lens could be exposed to China or any other country at that fact. And I do not want to contribute to collect an intel on any structures that I may uh, pass in close proximity to with my drone. What precautions or any should I take 
in flying as setting up parameters where it be airplane mode or anything settings within the Wi-Fi or not Wi-Fi uh, when I fly the drones, or is this just overblown? You all do an awesome job there in Albuquerque, and from a East Tennessee country boy to you all, I give you a great big thank you, and I hope to hear these questions answered in some format. I love the podcast, uh, but I also enjoy the intel on the private Facebook page. Thank you, Drone You, and I look forward to hearing back from you soon. <laughs> Thank you for the he – he said Funyun. Thank you. Funyun. Do you like Funyuns? Anyways, thank you for the question. Really do appreciate it. Uh, guys, if you have a question, don't ever forget you can go to AstroNU.com. We'd love to hear from you and uh, hopefully get your question on. Um, just like Mitch's, most likely what you're thinking, so are a lot of other people. So it was kind of a two-part question, Paul. Um, part one is – it's something that we've talked about a lot, but just being safe with airspace and making sure you're flying where you're supposed to – I don't know. We've talked a lot about it, but kind of what's a quick kind of reminder for, for Mitch and the listeners about that? Oh, for, <sighs> airspace, TFRs. Mm. There's always, you know, even if you have an app, that's what we're talking about, right? Even if you have an app like AirMap, mm -hmm. there's a lot of data that's wrong. And before I recommend any apps or whatnot, even to see airplanes and TFRs and all that, right. um, I think it's really important that you guys should really just be doing your due diligence and be checking tfr.fa.gov. AOPA re recently put out an article where this guy's telling a story where there was a presidential TFR and he was actually flying a Cessna and he was flying into some airspace and flew into the TFR and got an alert from the tower to immediately land and once land, come to the tower and talk with the local FAA official, mm. and he was, like, scared to death. I bet. And he was using a different app that essentially was supposed to showcase TFRs, and it didn't have the presidential TFR in it. Oh, uh, check that out. And that's a pretty important TFR. Oh, yeah. Some people might disagree with that, but <laughs> at least yeah. currently, but it is. You can get in a lot of trouble um, if you do something like that. So, you know, he, he mentioned in this article that even though there are apps out there, that it's really just best to check tfr.faa.gov. Right. Because that's really going to be the best information for you as it's updated by the second. Um, and, you know, guys, I really do think that that is the best uh, thing to check. There are other apps out there like ForeFlight. If you want to see air traffic in your area, you can do something like this. What flights are above me right now? Let's see. Come on. Okay, I found this. So here we go. Wolfram Alpha just pulled up all the flights that are above me right now. Now, I can't see it on an actual, like, geographic map, mm -hmm. but um, it does give me that information. You can use something like Flight Radar 24 that does showcase the air traffic in your area. Um, but in the new firmware upgrade, and I didn't talk about this when we were mentioning Aeroscope, you're actually going to be able to see air traffic in your area if you are connected to the Internet. But part of his question was also... Is the privacy of our data a big issue? Mm -hmm. Do you think it's a big issue? It has been. Well, the government certainly said it was a big issue. I think there have been some measures taken to mitigate the issue. But, yeah, in general, it's an issue, potentially. It is a big issue. So in the new firmware upgrade, there's actually going to be this new mode called privacy mode or local mode that you can enable where, essentially, you will not have any internet connection to the device whatsoever. Now that can still provide a problem because if you ever go to update your firmware, you have to connect to the internet and essentially DJI Go does sync your logs and does sync the information. Mm -hmm. So what you would have to do is fly in privacy mode, delete all your uh, logs in the app itself, then update the firmware and then you know go back into privacy mode and essentially fly. Or you can buy a DJI Crystal Sky and you're never connected to the internet. So so it might be worth the five, 600 bucks for the small one. Yeah, that was the small one. In fact, it was funny, uh, DJI Manhattan was like, do you guys want to test the new Ultra Bright? And I'm like, I'd love to test it for you, but I don't want to buy one. Right. Because <laughs> those are what, eight, 800 bucks? They're expensive. I don't even yeah. know how expensive they are, but they're, they're pretty pricey. And, uh, you know, Crystal Sky does have, you know, its benefits. Like if you're flying here in the desert southwest, mm -hmm. you guys know iPads overheat so fast. You lose all control. You lose the video screen. 
you know, these, these monitors do work well. And when they overheat, you can still see what's on the screen. It's just that the touch sensitivity doesn't work mm. when it gets super, super hot outside. Right, right. right. But you've also said it's, it's a nice picture as well. I it's mean, a beautiful it, picture. It handles glare well, that kind of thing. Well, the other beautiful thing about the Crystal Sky is that you can actually cache all of your data. So like all the videos and photos onto the device itself. Mm -hmm. So you can put two SD cards in there and capture all of your data. So if you ever lose the drone, you automatically have a backup of the data. Yeah, no doubt. That's very cool. It's really cool. I just wish you could use third-party apps like Pix4D on the Crystal Sky. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised they don't have that yet. But I'm nonetheless, sure probably, they don't. Yeah. And so the privacy issue, um, so yeah, you can go ahead and disconnect, but then you need to get rid of all the data before you sync back up. True. Very right. true. That's, I mean, that's the main answer to his question, basically. Yes. Um, the main answer is, yeah, you can use Crystal Sky to inhibit any sure. any information. I always turn my phone's data off, but it's still ripping GPS, so it still has all that GPS information, mm -hmm. even when it's in airplane mode. Um, now, that being said, he can use privacy mode, but he's got to delete his logs before he updates his firmware if he's going to do that. And privacy mode isn't even out and available yet. So Okay. Yeah. So in the meantime... Is it something that he should worry about? If he's flying infrastructure, I think so. I think it's definitely important. I mean, like even like Brendan Schulman said, you know, we are creating a local data mode to address the needs of our enterprise customers, including public and private organizations that are using DJI technology to perform sensitive operations around the world. Hmm. And they say that DJI is committed to protecting the privacy of its customers' photos, videos, and flight logs. And local data mode will provide added assurance for customers and heightened data security needs. So now the only issue is if you're not connected to the internet, you know, you're not going to have like TFR information or no fly zone information. So there is an increased responsibility aspect there. Right. Which we talked about and that should be something that folks are dealing with anyways. Agreed. Prior 100% flying. agreed. Yes. So I think that answers this question though. So flight radar to view air traffic, you should not really trust apps for TFRs, but if you want to use something like ForeFlight, um, I believe Skyward also uh, uses information. But again, I can't harp this enough. Uh, TFR.fa.gov is really the best resource for you. And then when it comes to privacy, privacy mode or local mode is coming out with um, the new firmware upgrade. If you can't wait until then, use uh, Crystal Sky and you, know, you can totally uh, nix um, data from the DJI Go app um, if you're using iOS, it is possible. Uh, so yeah, there's a couple different ways to do it. I think crystal sky is probably the best though. Right. Okay. Cause then you're not using a data enabled device. Sure. You, so, you can enable it to Wi-Fi, but you can put the whole thing in airplane mode. So. Got it. So yeah. if it's really important to you, then you'll uh, fork out the extra money for the Well, if it's important to your monitor. clients. That too. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it sounded to me like he was just concerned about not being one of those, not being caught up giving... Intel to people he doesn't want to give intel to. He's just concerned about that. True. So, and I understand. Yeah. I totally get absolutely. it. Absolutely. Hope that answers your question. Mitch, always happy to see your post in the DroneU community. And if you want to see what Mitch talks about in the DroneU community, then you're going to want to sign up to be a member yourself. Just go to thedroneu.com. Anyway, if you have a question, go to askdroneu.com. And again, thank you for those reviews on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you download podcasts. That's going to do it for us today. Guys, my name is Paul. And I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You.